Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, October 20th, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, Avenger Sermon Length, episode number 758. And guess what, folks? It's that time again. Now, going down to Texas. Just eat it. That's what he said. September 59. September 58. That was last week. Oh. Shoot. Anyway. I didn't do the thing time. and I was looking at the thing and then it's all right. <laughs> hey kids. You know you wanna you know you wanna put it in my mouth, right? <laughs> oh, you shut the fuck up right now. <laughs> Cause you know specifically. <laughs> There's a motherfucker motherfuckers on this channel <laughs> that would want that to happen. <laughs> I mean, that's why he said, you know you want it. I mean, what? he's just calling out the Go audience. Ahead, what am I doing? I'm just I'm just mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just giving a little sound bite for later. Anyways. <laughs> so hey, listen. Anybody want to clip that? I don't know. Yep, that's that's probably what's going to happen to that. That's probably what's going to happen to that. It's just going to be played on repeat. You're welcome, Biscuits. All right, moving on. So, <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That was also for some pre-pre-free show. Yeah, all right. So, Jeff, yes, we are returning to the great state of Texas. And today, October 20th, is the last day of the Texas State Fair um, one of the longest state fairs in the country. It's like a month long. Um, so we are wrapping up state fair season with a whole bunch of items. If you uh, listened to last week or you've listened to these other ones, you kind of know the drill. We're going to talk about some of the things that uh, were on the docket this year as new food items and see if we're going to buy it, if we're going to try it, or if we're just going to skip it. Because mm-hmm. we're like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I don't. I don't need that. Or no one needs that. <laughs> that too, sometimes. All so right. with that being said, let's jump in on the first one. Caramel Macchiato Fritters. These are from Crazy Autos and the Gulf Coast Grill. So this is described as a classic heaping serving of delicious caramel forms. The nucleus of these creamy coffee cake balls. Back to balls, baby. Each cake ball (laughs) is dipped in beignet batter and fried until golden brown. Three to an order. These caramel macchiato fritters are garnished with whipped cream, caramel, and white chocolate drizzle. You didn't think we forgot the coffee, did you? For a finishing touch, use your syringe full of espresso to inject into every delicious bite. Coffee chains, beware, there's a new macchiato in town. That is some heavy-handed marketing. (laughs) Sure the fuck is. Uh I'm in mixed feelings about this one. I same. Okay, so so it looks delicious. It sounds delicious. Uh, I'm sure it is delicious. One thing that bugs me is the syringe. There's something about that yeah. makes me a little uncomfortable. 
Yeah. Um, like, I'd rather they syringe it and then give it to me. Like, they could use that as part of the, you know, the preparation. But uh -huh. I don't feel like I want to do that part of the pre preparation. Mm. Personally. Well, it just, and this is just more of a me thing. Right. So, by the way, if you hadn't really noticed, uh, uh, I, I'm wearing burnt orange. <laughs> the color of Texas. You Texas? So, you do. Um, I hear you on that, Jeff. The the syringe is an intriguing thing, and to be fair, it's it doesn't have a hypodermic needle like syringe, like metal tip. No. It's just a food ejector type syringe, but it is different. So, um, this again, like I think we're all kind of in agreement. It had me until the syringe. <laughs> Like the idea behind it sounds good. I'm I, I'm I'm very much into it. I'm like you know I'm, I'm I will own. I'm basic in that ways. I love my like frothy, bubbly like latte, you know whatever kind of drink kind of thing going on. Mm -hmm. So I was very into this until like the idea of having to inject it myself. It's as Someone who is not the big, like, cook gifted, not saying I'm awful at it, but not the culinary, you know, gifted. My main concern is where do you inject it to where it doesn't just go spilling out the other side? Or where does it, where do you inject it to, to get it where it needs to be so you don't have a big mess on your hands? That's my concern. Uh, I think that uh, the tip is actually quite short. I get so that it, does, it doesn't go in very far, anyways. So, and honestly, yeah. it's a ball. Yeah. So wherever you but... you poke it, you're probably going to be okay. Mm. I don't know. For me, it's about the presence of the syringe, not necessarily about the syringe itself. Yeah. yeah. So let me ask you too. If you took the espresso and put it in a dipping cup. Yeah. So you dipped the beignet fritter in the espresso. Yeah. Like dunk it, eat it, dunk it again, eat it. Yeah. Like, and then you could just drink the little bit of espresso that's left. That I would be more inclined to. Yeah. So for me, this is a try it. Um, I was, again, it probably would have been an immediate buy it until like the idea of the syringe part. I'm just going to own it. I'm just going to own it. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I don't think the dip would give it what they're trying to go for here. Mm, I would prefer they fair. just ejected it themselves. I, don't I mean, wanna, I, I agree wanna, with you, I don't want like, like, what do I do with the, the syringe when it's done? toss it with everything else like there's a part of me that wants to just eat the balls and then just take the syringe and just squirt it in your mouth yeah squirt it baby mm -hmm. so we're back to that yep. so there's the second there's the second sound clip of the episode <laughs> <laughs> by the end jeff pressure's on you you got to come up with a line and then people will have their trifecta fantasy anyways what about you gary what are your thoughts um, I did say squirt it in your, my, my, my mouth. <laughs> I'm so I'm not a big mouth. coffee drinker. Anyway. Yeah. So the macchiato thing, I'm like, mm, okay. It's got caramel. It's got chocolate. It's sweet. It's cakey battery. Like all of it is like checking boxes, right. but I just don't know if it pushes me far enough to want to get it. So there are three balls to an order. Right. Like, like, let's give them points for telling us how much you get in a goddamn order, right? I love, yeah. I find three balls so cute. <laughs> I mean, personally, I prefer them in pairs, but. One's okay, too. I swear to God, I've seen a picture of, of somebody with three balls, and it was just for some reason, I thought it was adorable. 
It was attractive. So, I would try it. I don't think I'd buy it, though. Are we all three on to try it? Or, Jeff, are you going to try it? I'm on the or... low end of try it. Okay. Like, I want to try fair. it, but the syringe is unnerving me. So, from so, the sounds of it, we would get one order amongst right. the three of us. Uh huh. I would make the syringe disappear because it would bother <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> I'd ask him for a little dippy cup. I'd shoot the espresso in it so Damon and I could dip the ball in the espresso, like the cup of espresso. Somebody else would would inject my balls. Yeah. So, so (laughs) I'm just, I'm just putting in more clips. So, so this is what we do. Gary buys it. Oh, oh, my pocketbook. My pocketbook. I hear this. Yep. Yep. Maybe, maybe it's one of those things where we do cash. We uh, Damon and I yeah. give you a buck or two, and, yeah, and then there we you go. do the buy. Because then you're going to buy it, and then sure. you're going to inject one of the balls with the with the syringe. So Jeff, and then you'd get the little cups, and then squirt the rest of it into the two little cups, and then Jeff could have it with the like injected um, espresso without having to see it. Yeah, like, you, like then you'd like take the syringe, you would toss it, and then we would have our little cups and we can dip it in there. Gotcha. And go from there. Gotcha. Or, or you could just inject all three and then toss the, the cup, and we can do it as it's intended. Because the thing about the dipping cup is dipping with coffee, I don't think works very well for like the, the I feel like it's a misnomer of like dipping donuts in coffee. I, I right. don't think that that is a very satisfying thing because I don't think it necessarily soaks or coats as well as something like a hot mm-hmm. chocolate. Yeah. So uh. dipping, I don't think is as functional. All right. That's fair. Okie dokie. All right. So let's try something that's kind of a twist on a known thing. Next up is cookie butter nachos. So this is from Big Al's Grill, Texas Burgers, Dogs, and More. And it's Not listed, Big Al's described. <laughs> Might be, I don't know. It says, these nachos take the concept to a whole new level by using freshly fried flour tortilla chips coated in a heavenly blend of cinnamon sugar. The highlight of this indulgent treat is the generous scoop of homemade cookie butter cheesecake filling, which adds a creamy and rich element to the dish. To further elevate the taste, dollops of homemade cream cheese icing are generously added on top, followed by a drizzle of gooey caramel sauce. The finishing touch is a sprinkle of crushed Biscoff cookies, providing a delightful texture to this extraordinary dessert. Sold. And AI wrote that for <laughs> someone who desperately wants to be on Top Chef. <laughs> Jeff, you said sold? Sold. And we got You're sweet getting it. and creamy and a whole bunch of, of desserty uh, goodness. So I would buy. However, there's a little caveat. The picture, if you didn't know any better, you would think this is hummus with hot sauce <laughs> with pita chips. See, what, what makes me not think that is the fact that the, that the dollops yeah. are, uh, were, are in like the flour... Um, Flower yeah, tips, little rosettes things. Rosette things. Yeah. So yeah. It, it looks more desserty. Well, I mean, right. right. If you, I mean, if you keep looking at it, it kind of becomes obvious that it's probably dessert. But if you just did a quick look at it, it kind of looks like some seasoned pita chips with like hummus or whatever and some hot sauce thrown over top. I'm just saying, like, visually, it looks savory despite its like description. There's nothing like that really kind of screams dessert. Thomas, to Thomas does not come in that type of shape. Well, they would scoop it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I... but it would not stay that way. 
This is this is definitely much more solid <laughs> than hummus. Hummus hummus would spread a little. I mean, <laughs> because it's well, I'm thinking about this is in Texas, so it's all going to spread eventually. But it's just going to start. <laughs> just that's what they say about the people healthy. in Texas. They like to spread them. But I'll, oh. Leave fiery biscuits out of this. Anyways, David, are you buying it? Are you putting it in your mouth? Are you are you trying it? <laughs> That's not shade, it's truth. I love that boy. Anyways. Um I would buy this. Cookie butter is like one of my one of the like new it's not new but a newer flavor for me that i've just i found that i enjoy mm -hmm. um in a lot of things and but the idea of this sounds delicious to me now if this is like i'd have to figure out about how big this is because this looks like it has the potential to be shareable oh yeah That's i know i would not eat all this on my own I, this just looks it it might be starting to become a little too sweet and that's the only concern i have maybe a little rich yeah too. yeah i mean there's like a dozen chips in this picture yeah it just might be a little too much and again i and and for me i would probably do it without the caramel sauce that's fair, that's fair. yeah yeah i think that's customizable just tell them you don't want the sauce yeah if I'm gonna do this like a nacho, I want like the blah 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 right. right in my mouth. Anyway, all right. Next up, I'm gonna need the correction from Jeff. Deep fried tablitas. I've never heard of tablitas. Okay. <laughs> and I these think that's probably from... a correct, correct pronunciation. So I think you're good. Okay. So these are from Texas Holy Fried Ribs and Fusion Barbecue. This is battered, juicy short ribs that are fried to golden brown deliciousness, served with a fried jalapeno fresh lime slices, a sprinkle of cotita, coti, it's cotita. supposed to be cojita, right? Cotija. Yeah. Cotija. Cheese, and three different dipping sauces to choose from. You'll be sure to enjoy this State Fair of Texas twist on traditional Mexican style short ribs, it says. Ah, uh, so maybe to bleed us as well. So they took short ribs, basically, and then fr deep fried them. So this is giving me, uh, oh. uh, oh my god, why am I like totally blanking? Um, may have been pan fried. Uh, fried steak. Ah, uh, hmm. yeah. Country fried or chicken Very fried good. steak? Yes, yes. There we go. Thank you. Some those are like yeah, pound it out, out. And... pound it out. Right, right, right. But it, but in essence, it's. I don't think they pounded the meat. Yeah, so tablitas is our AKA loaded ribs are monster beef ribs that are have that have been cross cut. Um, so if you want them tender and delicious, you got to give them time to cook. Wow. Okay, this is someone's. Okay. This is from someone's TikTok. That's why I'm like, why this 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 grammar is not the greatest. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, grilled beef short ribs. Yeah, but also, you know. Um, oh, interesting. You can fry them. Yeah. Cross section of short ribs, also known as flaken ribs, as in or flanken ribs. F L A N K E N S. Mm -hmm. Sorry, F L A N K E N S, as in like from the flank side mm -hmm. of the the beef. It says they're known for their marbling and tenderness and are a staple in South Texas barbecues and carne asadas. Mm. So this is definitively a Texas thing. Right. Um I would try this. Yeah, I would give this a try. I wouldn't I know I wouldn't outright buy this. Um, I would be concerned about just how, like, I, I deep frying things tends to make them not as tender 
And that's what I would be more concerned with. Although it doesn't say deep, well, it does say deep fried. I'm like, it doesn't, yes, it does say deep fried. It's literally in the name. Um, so I'm just, I, I'm, I'm uncertain, but maybe. Interesting. In the, for my co-host in the Telegram chat, I just sent you a picture of what it, the meat looks like before it's cooked. So it's, it's intriguing because the picture kind of looks like strips of bacon. Mm -hmm. But you can also tell this is like from the rib section because at the bottom you see like the cross cut of the rib. So basically what they're doing is taking like rib roast, but they're slicing it thin, not in the direction you would normally think of. But it makes sense because by doing that, that's how you're going to get a more tender part of the meat. Mm. I'm very intrigued. Anyways, um, I would probably buy because my curiosity is peaked and I've never seen or heard of this before. So, yeah, I, I see me open up my pocketbook. I'm going, OK, this is this is a thing. And it's going to be new to me, not something I'm likely to make at home. Or can easily throw together. Mm -hmm. Jeff, what did you say? Sorry if you did. I didn't say anything yet. (laughs) Three words. Deep fried beef. Yum, (laughs) yum, yum. So that's fair. That's fair. And it's got got fried jalapenos and 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 uh, some cotija cheese, some dipping sauces. Oh. Yeah. This to me definitively, like I would probably order this on a menu. Like if I saw this in a restaurant, it was like an appetizer. Mm, right. I would be like, ooh. It does sound good. Right, right, right. Yeah. What I predict is that Drew and I would order it to share and it would be good and then we'd be mad and we'd have to place a second order because we (laughs) shared to begin with. (laughs) That happens every once in a blue moon. Yeah. All right. So next up is Dickel's Triple Meat Big Back Snack. From Dickel's Smokehouse. This Texas sized indulgence is presented with a boastful five layers and seven tantalizing flavor profiles. Okay, Mary. <laughs> the base consists of Abuela's cherished elote street corn recipe. Abuela's. Include. <laughs> I'm going to butcher everything this episode, including a fusion of roasted sweet corn, lime, butter, cumin, and chili powder. Following suit is a portion of succulent smoked chopped beef brisket that paves the way for a delightful serving of gourmet smoked Gouda mac and cheese. A buttermilk biscuit crowned with tender cubes of hogzilla pork belly burnt ends. That are slow smoke to perfection and coated in a house-made sauce completes this tower of flavors. Still hungry? A savory loaded nacho beef brisket sausage link is halved and adorned the cup's interior, accompanied by a heavenly deep-fried creakle-cut maple waffle flavored potato slice on top. If Two weeks that in is a row. Mouthful. Two weeks in a row. <laughs> We've had the perfect... State fair foods of being really weird. (laughs) And I will say this, unlike last week's, I'm all for this one. So you're buying it. Mm -hmm. So, David, do you want to go, where do you want me to go? (laughs) You go ahead. All right. I'm going to say something really slanderous. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. (laughs) While my stomach says yes and my taste buds say yes, my brain is mad. (laughs) Because it's a lot to think about and to process. When you see the picture, it is in essence a savory parfait. Because it is 
because it is layers. It is the corn. It is like, what is it? The brisket, I think. And then the yeah. mac and cheese. And then the burnt end thing. And there's a little okay. cornichon. They didn't even mention that. There's this tiny little pickle like thing. Like, and the wedges. Like, this is a lot. Now, if this is in a quart size cup, or no, pint size cup, right? Yeah. Quart yeah. pint. Yeah. yeah. So if this is in the pint size cup, this is a good size. Mm hmm. Um, I'm thinking it's kind of costly because there's a whole bunch of meat in this, like protein. Yeah. Yeah. But Worth every yeah, time. give me a fork and a napkin because I'm I'm probably buying it. Like this is one of the things where I'd probably get it and then be like, hey, do you got one of those like little food tray thing, uh, paper food tray things? And then I would take it over to the table and kind of look around and then just dump it out. <laughs> dump it out. <laughs> so. Yeah, this is definitively not for the people who don't want their stuff to touch. <laughs> True like they are just going to walk right on past. They ain't even going to bother. Oh, baby. So the, I, sorry, David, that was a journey for me. Like, I have to say off the bat, I don't know why. I'm not sure you should have, <laughs> but I ain't mad at it. And I don't think I have to be high. <laughs> To understand it or to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. This is. There's a lot going on here. There is. There's a lot going on here. Almost. And I am. I'm in this weird place. Because like, again. Presentation, the way it looks. I am. I'm kind of like, I don't know. But all of these flavors are like check boxes, mm -hmm. like you know, a Lote Street corn, um, chopped brisket, Gouda mac and cheese, biscuit, burnt ends. Jesus Christ, burnt ends, um, yes. sausage. <laughs> you know, and then like oh, and then you get a little sweet, kind of sweet with a with a maple flavor. You know, waffle. You know maple waffle flavor potato slices like you're getting all of this stuff together and and then like add a gherkin or whatever like and it's just this is a like a if you were ever to see like a like a meat sampler tray from like a rib place or a barbecue place this is pretty much that only like in a cup and oh, fuck it i'd buy it i don't i don't like <laughs> i'm sitting here like i don't know but you know what i would i would the idea of this is just tantalizing enough for me to be like, yeah, I got it. Like, I would, I would have to try it. I, I might I, be like a Jeff, and 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 like dump de it, deconstruct it, put it on a yeah. plate or something. Yeah, I wouldn't de but... deconstruct it. it; would stay all together, and it was just to be. I would be multiplying it. Yeah, I mean, uh, it all together. That's fair. Uh, that not for me. Like, I, yeah. I probably just went. I, I'm curious. I would this be is, curious. It might be one of those things where, where part of it, parts of it, you could easily just like uh, finger food pick it. Yeah, I would. I would. I would try. Emphasis on try, to get a like, one like, every layer mm -hmm. kind of taste of it all. I don't think it's going to happen. Like right. I just. It's right. nice. Yeah, I, mean, I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, the biscuit. I think it's the thing that's going to make it difficult. So it's interesting, Damon. You said the exact thing that I was trying to wrap my brain around. They took. You're right. They took everything on the platter, mm -hmm. and they put it in a cup, basically. Right. Because yeah, if you go to a barbecue joint, you're absolutely going to get your probably your two meat platter. So in this case, you're going to end up with your burnt ends and your beef brisket, and then you're going to have your sides. So that's going to be your mac and cheese and your elote. You're going to get mm -hmm. a biscuit automatically with a platter. Uh -huh. And then they're probably going to throw the potato slices with it. Yeah. Because yeah. who doesn't love carbs on carbs on carbs with your meat? Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it, it's very much. And I think there's three meats because there's beef brisket, there's burnt ends, and there's sausage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. So it's three meat platter. Have mercy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck that. I. I kind of want barbecue now. Uh, and I will say, one of my favorite things about this, it's ugly. Mm. And, it, and here's the thing is, 
pretty food isn't necessarily good food. Sure, Some of the, sure, my, sure. The, my favorite food is ugly. It is not pretty to look at, but it's yeah. tasty as fuck. And That's I'm fair. About the texture and the taste, the look comes second. And actually, I'm attracted to ugly food. No, that's fair. I agree. Okay, I have to. I'm trying to get to this the next one, and I keep passing by things that are making my mind go, "What the fuck is that?" Sorry. All right, sorry. Moving on then. So yeah. the next one is called the Island Rumble, and this is by Mac Loaded, and it's described as "Sail away to flavor paradise with our Island Rumble Bowl." Dive into a medley of Caribbean flavors with a base of extra creamy mac and cheese, topped with juicy flame grilled to perfection jerk chicken that is marinated in a special pineapple rum jerk marinade. Garnished with a tangy homemade pineapple pico salsa and a flavorful spicy jerk crema, each bite is a tropical getaway for your taste buds. Come on down and let your senses set sail with every delicious forkful. Oh, delicious. One love never tasted so good. Oh, God. So I'm mostly sold Go ahead. on this. Mostly. But I do have a strong complaint. Okay. They're using capellini. Yeah. Ah. Uh, What's wrong with that? It's not mac. It's not macaroni. Capellini is not good for mac and cheese. Oh, well, I disagree. No. You, this should be elbow mac. <laughs> the credit debate. <laughs> I'm good with like like a, a rutini or a penne instead of a elbow mac. Yeah. Not not the the generic plain ordinary original Kraft mac and cheese noodles. Those those are awful. You need to be elbow macaroni is like the best. But capellini, no. How how do I know? One, I've tried it. Two, uh, I believe it was one of the pastas they used in the uh, Myth Munchers mac and cheese episode. And they determined that it was not good. And it's it's and and honestly the texture of using capellini instead of like elbow macaroni um is kind of gonna throw me off it's a te that's gonna be a, also a texture texture thing for me i don't like okay. the noodles I don't think otherwise it's otherwise looks good i think it's capellini i could be wrong with the noodle name but you know what i mean the yeah. coaster it might be, is it cavatappi? Yeah. Cavatappi? That's it. Yeah. Because cavallini is like long, thin. You're, yeah, these are these are cavatappi. Sorry. Had to, had to, I was trying to like. So so just pretend I've been saying the same, right? Like, this entire time. <laughs> saying cavatappi. I'm Got trying it. to figure before, out what before, it was. Before the Italians start flooding our comments. Yeah. <laughs> cavatappi. I, I knew so, it was like, it, it started with a yeah. uh, See. This so, is not the right noodle for for this dish. I so bet this would this be a... be much much better if they just used freaking elbow <laughs> elbow macaroni. So is this a buy it, try it, or skip it? I this is a try it, and I I only put in the try because the noodles. Be like, okay, does that at least have a decent flavor? And then I might buy buy it if I really, really like it. But it's gonna right. annoy me with the type of noodles they used. Right. Um for me, this is a try it. I'm um I'll, okay, I'll just say this, and this is just me being an asshole and anal about shit. I am kind of tired of this 
let's put stuff on top of mac and cheese that doesn't normally go on top of mac and cheese and make it a thing. Like, that is my, mm. like, I'm just kind of... What says that there's anything that's normal to put on mac and cheese? I, there, I, I'm not saying it as, like, there's something normal. I'm just tired I'm just of saying, the trope. This is not... I'm tired of the trope. Something different... <laughs> It is something different. I mean, you're just it's... you're just not a fan of topped mac and cheese. Yeah, I prefer I prefer mac and well. The only thing to me, I'll just say it like this: the only thing that has to be on top of mac and cheese is more cheese. Um, that's fair. That's what fair. he's a fan of is topped men, but that's not <laughs> what's being served. Wow. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> but I would top give this... men. That was topped men. Yeah. Slight difference. Anywho. They're also known as bottoms, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway, that being said, I would give this a taste. I might even like it. It's just like, can we do something else? Mm. That's my only thing. Can we do something else? As is, but as this, a is, fair food, this is uh, this is a eh, but still tasty. Yeah, like, so still good. Like this, I feel like you. This is like a definitely sit down. Like you're not eating this on the go. This is definitely sit down. Like we're having lunch, sitting down, having this. But it also comes from a place that I'm assuming, given the name, is probably one of these places that does this thing. Like these loaded mac and cheese. Well, it says mac, mac loaded. loaded. Ha <laughs> Anyway, I would also want to know what is your extra creamy base? Is this like multiple cheeses? Is this just a plain, like simple cheese? Because that's going to also make a difference to me with these flavors specifically. And it might right. be generic mac and cheese. Yeah. Uh, sauce. It's just more on the extra creamy side. Right. Gary? So I would buy it. I would not have an issue with the, with the noodle that's being used. Um... It looks sizable. Uh -huh. Like in the bowl, like this looks like a meal. Right. So I'm feeling like I'm going to want to share this. Because I'm not sure I'm going to want to eat the whole thing. Because I'm at the fair. Right. Or this would be like the last thing you have so that you can take it home. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is a fair. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, I mean, if it comes the way the picture is, I'm like, that's a lot of food. Right. Like, it's a huge heaping, like, you know, mound of the bowl. It's not like just a flat level, you know, right. bowl of food. So there's a part of me that's like, this really looks like a whole meal. And it sounds good. I There's nothing about it that I'm really, like, concerned about um, other than. Have I already been eating? Am I going to eat more? If I'm going to want dessert, like, that is the only rich. thing. So that's that's where I'm yeah. like, I'm going to probably buy it because I want to try it. But I also feel like I'm going to share it. Yeah. Um, and see if anybody else is interested who, you know, is is as committed as I am. You know, I mean, trying yeah. it is one thing. But to me, that's like just having a bite. And I'm like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna need to find a whole bunch of people to have a yeah, yeah. This is not a yeah. This would be a yeah. I'm just anyway. That being said, hmm. All right. Now, here's that turd at weird. Next up is the Lay's potato chip drink from Milton's. And it says, see chips in a whole new light with the Lay's potato chip drink, a daring blend where sweet meets a thrilling heat, capturing the new flavors of America's favorite chip in every sip. 
This vibrant handshaken concoction combines the sweet lusciousness of mango and a signature blend of citrus juices with a fiery kick of hot honey jalapeno infused syrup and artfully placed strawberry drizzle. Each sip is smothered over with a layer of cool, sweet foam, then topped with Lay's sweet and spicy honey potato chips for a playful crunch and a spicy adventure. Sip it if you dare. Damon, your face went on a journey. <laughs> As I read the description. Uh, I will definitely say this. This goes along the line of my theory on fair foods. So, good on you, Milton's. Here's the thing is, don't put the chips in the drink. <clears throat> what you do so... is you put a cup on top of the mixed drink which has a straw going through the middle which is kind of how, uh -huh. how it looks here and then uh -huh. the chips are kind of like in a cup separate from the drink and you drink through the cup uh-huh i have a theory mm -hmm. the picture does not exactly match the description to your point, Jeff, it does, it I does, think, but it doesn't. I think they these are slushy cups. So you know how you can go get a slushy at the machine, and the lids are not flat; they're like bold, like mm -hmm. domed with a hole in the middle. So like you put the lid on first, you put it up under the nozzle, and you pull the lever, and it just fills all the way up, and it can like you know get because it has air in it, it gets volumetric and it can kind of fill up the dome as well. I think that's what they've done. I think, to Jeff's point, they did the drink with the strawberry drizzle, the mango citrus stuff, with the foam, and then they take the lid of the dome and they invert it upside down, and they stick it on top to divide between the foam, and then they put the chips in the upside-down dome like a cup, and they put the straw through the middle. That's what this looks like to me, which mm -hmm. is not exactly what I just read because the description makes it sound like they put the potato chips in the drink, not on top of the drink. It does say top, so it is on top of the drink. Right. It's just what we're trying to say is, is there a barrier between <laughs> the drink and the chips or not? Right, right. Looking at the picture, while you all kind of think that there is, I don't think there is. I... I don't think there is. Yeah, I, I, and I don't think I, there is even in that picture. Yeah. And I think that is a tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> this entire drink is a tragedy. So, not really. Okay, so... As as Gary said, my face was going on a journey because I'm like, okay, mango and citrus juice. Okay, that's fine. Then you throw in hot honey and jalapeno. No, not a fan of the heat. A little too much there. And then, okay, then there's like some strawberry drizzle and then there's some cold foam or sweet cold foam. Cool, sweet foam, whatever. Okay, this sounds really tasty. Okay, it might be not that bad. I might be able to bypass some of the spiciness of the honey and jalapeno because I feel like this has the potential to be like a balanced drink. But then you throw some fucking chips on it, and then I'm done. <laughs> so there's an article online from Eater Dallas. So like Eater the magazine or whatever, but it's a Dallas branch. And the title says, The Lay's Potato Chip Drink is the most unhinged semifinalist in the 2024 State Fair of Texas Big <laughs> Tex Food List. Uh-huh. <laughs> just it, the title uh, alone cracks me up. It's not very much of an article. It just runs through a list of the items that are that were offered this year. Um all it says is yeah. this one is unhinged. These folks took Lay's potato chips and combined them with mango, citrus juice, hot honey, jalapeno infused syrup, and a strawberry drizzle. It's topped with sweet foam and Lay's sweet spicy honey potato chips. Okay, what kind of manic made this up? Question mark. <laughs> 
it, 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 it's a skip it for me. I'm not even. I, I I can't even like again. At first, I was like maybe okay with it, mm-hmm. but if your whole goal behind, like I would, I would. I I mean, I it would lose the appeal. I know this is the whole point of it is to like have the chips on it, but I'd be like, I don't want the chips. You can keep those in the bag. I'm good. Like, I will take the drink as is without the chips. No, no, you don't need to put those on there. Just, just, just put them, put them away. It's don't even. You know, it's base. This is this is very much like ice cream and cake. For me, where a lot of people will have cake and ice cream, and it will be like all in the same plate. I would prefer to have them separate. The ice cream in a bowl, the cake on a plate, keep them separate. That's right. what I want here. If it ends up being the cup is the, uh, the the cup has the drink at the bottom, and then like there's a topped cup on top where the chips lie, and they're separated. I could probably see that, uh, based off of all all the information I've gotten so far. No. So that's two skips. Gary? I'm telling you, I'm sticking to my theory. <laughs> the chips are in an upside upside down dome lid shoved in the top of it. And if that's the case, I would buy it. I'm intrigued if enough. Not, if it's not, I ain't high enough for this. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Like I'm, I, <laughs> like, like I'm with I'm with Jeff on the whole texture thing. Like you're gonna get these chips soggy. It's gonna be nasty. I don't like soggy chips. Right. No one likes soggy chips. You've had the little like greaser in a in a bag of chips and be like, yeah, I don't want that on my tongue. Imagine that, but it's sweet cream cold foam on top on that that is soaked into your chip. I don't care that it's a sweet and spicy honey potato chip. You're not going to get that because it's going to be dredged off of it because of the cold foam. It, no. I mean, there. Is, I, I mean, in its defense, there is such thing as as frosty uh, fries being dipped in a frosty. <clears throat> this can go along the same line, but I'm good. No. I love how Jeff is willing to give it like to give it space and is like, but no, like you can't come in my house. Like you you can stay outside. You can have space out there. I recognize your existence. Not yucky in somebody else's yard. Just not my thing. That's kind of. Yeah. And I'm like, throw it in the trash. (laughs) (laughs) No. Okay. I won't say that. That's, that's me. You can, you can, you can have it. You, you can, can have it. it. <laughs> like Gary, if if your if your statement is true and it's a it's a little dome cut with the chips separated from it, cool. You have a great taste with that. You give that a great try. That I might you actually right try, but based off the information I have, right? No. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. Because I feel like if it was served the way I think it it is or should be, I would eat the chips from the top. And now I've got this like sweet heat potato chip thing going on. And now I want the cool, refreshing drink. Right. That's my theory. But no, based on the based on the description and everything, I'm like, "Mm, no. So let's wrap it up with one <laughs> I think we'll be okay with. Whole Bunt, that's B-U-N-D-T, of Kisses from Southside Steaks and Cakes. This captivating creation features a deep-fried 7-Up Bunt cake enveloped in a signature batter. Fresh from the fryer, the cake is filled with mouth-watering Belgian chocolate resulting in a satisfying volcanic eruption of flavors adorned with crumbled homemade chocolate chip cookies and miniature kisses dusted with powdered sugar 
and crowned with a full-sized Hershey on a pillow of whipped cream and a sprinkle of edible silver glitter, this dessert becomes irresistible to fairgoers of all ages. And the reason why I'm laughing is because the eye roll that came from David <laughs> when we got to the edible glitter <laughs> just about had enough at that point. Oh, so, anyway. Uh, Jeff, this is saying... very pretentious, and this is one where <clears throat> it is a sheer. Mm. Okay. This is not something that I would probably want the whole thing up. Right. So it it is a combination of try and buy mm. in the fact that I would definitely help pay for it and then share it with somebody. <laughs> because girl, that's a lot of chocolate. <laughs> that's a lot. It's 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 a lot. And I I'm, I'm having um the the only problem I have is the glitter because I am I think glitter should be abolished in general. <laughs> Not just edible Even glitter, if it's edible just glitter in general. Edible glitter is still glitter. I know. No, I'm no I'm I'm just I'm just I okay. So Oh, I'm, I'm, I think similar to Jeff in a way, this is going to be a lot of sugar and chocolate and sugar. <laughs> and I feel like it's doing too much. Mm. Like a deep fried seven up bunt cake that, okay, that sounds good. Then you fill it with Belgian chocolate. Then you top it with chocolate chip cookies and kisses, which is basically just mini chocolate chips. Um, then you throw a you throw whipped cream on top of it. Throw a a chocolate chip, uh, a choc a, another kiss on it. Then you sprinkle it with edible glitter. Like we don't need the glitter again. Um, I think that's again unnecessary. Um, and it looks like as I'm looking at this picture because they didn't even say it in the description. They also drizzle. Chocolate on it. No, that must More be the full size Hershey's. Because I do, in that, that picture, I do not see a full size Hershey's. I I get what you mean, but there's also unless it's the entire bottle chocolate. of a, of of a thing of Hershey syrup. There's a bunch of chocolate syrup on it. Like that's. And it just it's just a lot and it, it, and it melted. I mean it, it's hot out of the fryer, they put all this chocolate on. What do you think the chocolate's gonna do? It's gonna melt. I still don't think it's gonna melt that much. It's gonna melt not enough then... to make these drizzle. Not not enough to make all these yeah, drizzle. It's a, it's a no, little that's, bit too that's, much drizzle. There's a lot of drizzle. Anyway, that <laughs> being said, um I'm I'm sharing this with two or three people. Like this is this is I, I'm I I'm probably gonna get a few bites of this and then be like overwhelmed with the sugary sweetness. You're, 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 you're part of my sugar group. Yeah, exactly. Uh I, I will say this is definitely a fair food. This is this oh, is Oh for sure. Spot on fair food. Right. Good job. Gary. Um, it's a yes. I hear everything that you guys are saying. I have to agree, despite its size. It's a little misleading because most people think of a butt cake and are like, Jesus, it's this huge thing. But these are little ones. Yeah. yeah like, but lit. Um, I didn't think it was a full full size butt cake. I thought it was like. Right, right, right. But they don't really describe it that way. So it's a little confusing. Um, if you're just like listening to us, um, so dimensionally the Hershey kiss on top makes sense. Like it doesn't look ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I hear you like it's a lot of sweet. Um, it's probably 
leaning heavy on chocolate. So I agree that it's a share. The mouthwatering so, Belgian chocolate might actually be dark chocolate. So not as sweet. Uh, but then you get the Hershey's Kiss and chocolate chip cookies and miniature kisses. Yeah. And I open. I have to do this. I opened up the, the picture mm-hmm. in um, its own link. And it is definitely... The, you can see the whole chocolate, the her whole Hershey kiss, and then it is drizzled with like a chocolate sauce. Yeah, let me just throw that in our chat here. So I think, I think it's so much of a share that I would probably not buy it. Mm. Like I would be willing if someone went to go get it to help them. Like to taste it, to try it, like to have some, but I think I think my pancreas and my blood sugar, <laughs> like <laughs> that is totally fair. I think yeah. I th- I think they would weep and, <laughs> and 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 be you know not willing. They would not consent to the <laughs> to the abuse they're about to take. <laughs> so. Oh. Especially to eat the whole thing, like it just. Oh God! Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, look, looking at this picture again, like, and especially since I've blown it up <laughs> quite a bit. Oh, it hurts my whole mouth. <laughs> I'm feeling a pain in my lower, like my lower intestine. Just like no, mm. it looks good. Like, I will say that. It looks, like, delicious. This is a shareable dessert. Yeah. Like, I am am not eating this. I I think I said that already. I'm not eating this on my own. No, that's fair. That's totally fair. Can I get it without the glitter? (laughs) You probably. Can Can we protest the glitter? I would say I and I I just I agree, Jeff. I don't like. Okay, so again, just, looking at this picture, here's the thing all is, blown up. Here's the thing is, if it didn't have the edible silver glitter on there, I would not say this is necessarily a pretentious uh, dessert. But as soon as they got the edible glitter on there, it's pretentious. It doesn't need it. That's my thing. Right. It doesn't it do anything. It doesn't need it. It doesn't do anything. Right. I don't put glitter is tasteless anyway. It's all just fair. Like I can like again, I've blown this picture up. I can see it in this like picture. Mm-hmm. Um but again, I can barely see it. Right. The only reason obviously I'm seeing it is because they probably have light on it that is letting the glitter shine. Yeah, and um, you got the powdered sugar on there, anyways. Powdered yes. sugar is kind of like glitter. The yeah. only thing is, I'm okay I, with powdered sugar. I would it's, prefer it's as, almost powder. as bad as glitter, but still. Yeah, powdered sugar has the tendency to get everywhere, but at least it washes off and doesn't go everywhere, and is there for eternity. I have I had glitter on my face yesterday and I keep looking at my face and I keep seeing just little bits here and there. Yeah, see, just just avoid glitter. Glitter again. Done with glitter. Yeah. <laughs> Down with glitter. <laughs> Holding up the protest side. Down with glitter. So that's that's that. That's that's that's, 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 that's the new stuff from Texas. So as a brief recap, I think I'm going to get the tablitas as an appetizer. That's the short rib Mm -hmm. thing. Uh I'm going to get the triple meat big back snack meal. (laughs) And I'm going to wrap it up probably with the cookie butter nachos. Ah. Based Uh... on these particular items today. I'm going to bypass the chip drink. I'd probably walk in, start off with the caramel macchiato fritters with somebody else injecting them for me. 
<laughs> Walk around for a little while. Uh, grab some of the tablitas. Um, uh, while I'm working on those, I'll stop by uh, uh, Dickles. Great name, by the way. And get the triple meat big back snack. A little more walking around. Grab some Island Rumble from Mac Loaded. Also, look there. There's suggestions. There might be something I find more appealing. Uh, complain to them about their noodles. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's totally what they're there for. Walk around for a while and then uh, wrap up with, with some friends sitting at a table uh, having a whole, whole bunch of cases. A bunch of kisses. That's a different story. Never mind. Um, for me, that's for, that's okay. For after the fair. There we go. For me, I kind of would be the same. I would start with the um, caramel macchiato fritters. I think I would give those a try with a couple of people. I would have like, let's give this a shot. Um, sure I would then, yeah share these balls um then i would go get the the i think we're all in agreement we'd all want the triple meat big backs big back snack from dickles i think that i think is a really good potentially filling like lunch slash dinner depending on where it, we it are it would have to be in the middle of the visit right because you want something to get you going that's why you start off with the fritters and then move into the meats near the middle or like a quarter to halfway through to kind of right. like, because you want to work that off. Yeah, 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 exactly. And then I would end sharing the whole bunch of kisses sans edible glitter. I think that's fair. Yeah. All right. So in our in our Telegram for the host, I'm sending them uh, pictures from online of the Dickles wow. big back snack. That's. I was I was right. It comes. It's actually, the, the yeah, that's cup. definitely a pint. Jesus Christ! Maybe maybe a little bigger. Yeah, it's definitely a, a, a meal. So this is a bit probably I'd probably be although the cookie butter nachos maybe I'd replace that the whole bunch of kisses and and do the mm. nachos. Now that I think that's about. true. Going to Big Al's Diner. I mean, Big Al's Grill. All right. So, yeah. Um, there's going to be links. Uh, there will be a link to the State Fair. There's also a fair food map. Um, so it's not quite like the brochure that we had last week, but similar. Um, there were 50 new foods at the Texas State Food Fair. So we only touched like... 10% of them. We didn't, we Seven. didn't even get into all of them. Uh, so yeah, there's other things in there. I mean, there's some common things, you know, yeah. like sandwiches, pizza, drinks, dumplings, Ooh, fried apple, salmon, <sighs> <grape? laughs> candy, pork, belly, bacon bites. Oh, anyway, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Texas barbecue rib deviled eggs. So if you want to see what the other foods were that got introduced at the Texas uh, Food Fair, sorry, the Texas State Fair for food, new options you can visit. You can check that out online. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there was there was definitely some stuff that was you know ooh, appealing, interesting. Um, yeah. No, thank you. I will say this: I didn't really see any bugs this year. Well, thank That's God good. for that. Like usually every year there's a there's a thing where they're trying to make that that like what people are interested in or should try or, you know, whatever. I didn't really see much of that this year. That's it seems we definitely were going with a lot of like we're returning to classic Americana. Stick us, put a stick in that shit, batter it, deep fry it. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, like that, <laughs> like the, the classic American. That's what we're gonna do, um, wow. or smash up like you know things, or take new flavors like tahini. 
has been really big, you know, for the past couple of years as a seasoning. So like there's a Sunday, there's, you know, different stuff. So yeah. Wow. There we go. All right. With that, that's the end. Almost the end of October. One more week. Hmm. I wonder what we're doing then. In any case, <laughs> plain ways to contact us. You can pop over to uh, CubsOutLive.com where you can find the links to the uh, Texas State Fair website, which has pictures of all these. Besides, hey, if you're watching the video version, you saw saw some pictures. Uh, you can also um, shoot us an email at CubsOutLive.com and leave us a voicemail at 361 we'll talk. That's 361 265 8255. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. Join our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. You can find out when we're planning recording these shows uh, at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. And you can get various uh, coups de uh, over at zazzle, zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Some of those designs were designed by Smash. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smash the Bear. You can also support us by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud or send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Find us on your various podcasting platforms, Apple Podcasts, Amazon, and Spotify. Um, also, um, in addition to like liking and reviewing us on those platforms, go to this video. Like it. Just, just hit like. If you listen to the podcast, just pop over to the video, hit like, you can go away after that. But... Just hit like. I want to see how many likes we can get. Uh, you can find me anywhere on the internet as box set box, puppy box, cub box, something or other. Damon. You need to um, mute yourself. <laughs> there. Okay. Huh. I was. Time to burp. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Theater Cup 79 on most very related sites, or you can find me as Pump underscore Umber or Pump Umber 79 on Twitter or Blue Sky. Those are not safe for work. For the safe for work stuff, you can find me as um, DMA Gamer 79 on Twitter or TikTok. Gary. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gamer73. With that, say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. Bye-bye.